Iran's supreme leader has ordered his military officials to prepare a reprisal attack against Israel, a report said Thursday, as senior Iranian officials warned of harsh and unimaginable responses to Israel strikes on Iranian military sites earlier this month. The report in the New York Times, citing Iranian officials, said Tehran's response would not come until after U.S. voters go to the polls on November 5, though other news outlets have quoted sources saying Iran's response could come ahead of the vote. Earlier Khamenei's I's senior aide Mohammad Mohammadi Galpayegani warned of a harsh and regretful response to Israel's strike. The recent action of the Zionist regime in attacking parts of our country was a desperate move and the Islamic Republic of Iran will give it a harsh and regretful response, the influential cleric, told the Tasneem news agency. Galpay Egani went on to laud Iran's air defense performance in preventing the entry of the Zionist regime fighters into the territory, and said damage from the strikes was minimal. Shortly after the Israeli attack, Iran's Revolutionary Guard Corps Hossein Salami said Israel made a mistake and will see Iran's reaction that will surpass imagination. He claimed that the Jewish nation was wrong to believe that it could change the balance of power in the region by launching a few missiles. Recall, Israel targeted military sites in several regions of Iran on October 26 in retaliation for Iranian attacks, including a barrage of almost 200 ballistic missiles fired towards Israel on October 1. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel had crippled Iranian air defense and missile production systems. He said the strikes had severely damaged Iran's defense capability and its ability to produce missiles. Official Iranian sources have publicly played down the impact of the attack, saying most missiles were intercepted and those that weren't caused only limited damage to air defense systems. The United Nations Security Council met Wednesday after the United States said Wednesday that North Korean troops wearing Russian uniforms and carrying Russian equipment are moving toward Ukraine. Should DPRK soldiers be used in the battlefield, his would mark a further and serious escalation of the conflict, Robert A. Wood, the deputy U.S. ambassador to the UN said. Ukrainian Ambassador Sergei Kislitsia said it was obvious Russians' actions in working militarily with North Korea are a violation of UN sanctions. Even mice and cockroaches know receiving assistance from the fully sanctioned North Korea is a brazen violation of the UN Charter, he said. North Korea's move to tighten its relationship with Russia has triggered alarms across the globe, as leaders worry about how it may expand the war in Ukraine and what Russian military aid will be delivered to Pyongyang in exchange. Russia's ambassador, Vasily Nebenzia called the allegations, bare-faced lies, and said the allegation is being used to distract from, truly significant problems that threaten international peace and security. Muy buenas tardes. Madam President, even mice and cockroaches, but not the Russian ambassador in this chamber, know that none of the countries that provide assistance to Ukraine is under the Security Council sanctions. Yet, in its turn, receiving assistance from, a, from the fully sanctioned North Korea is a brazen violation of the UN Charter. At least seven aircraft carrying military personnel of up to 2,100 soldiers flew from the Eastern Military District to the Russia's border with Ukraine. The number of DPRK soldiers expected to be transferred from the Russia's Primorsky Krai by the end of October 2024 may reach 4,500. It is also expected that in November 2024, DPRK military personnel will begin directly participating in combat operations against Ukraine's defense forces. Should DPRK soldiers be used in the battlefield, this would mark 
a further and serious escalation of the conflict. The decision to deploy North Korean soldiers would also be an inescapably clear demonstration that Russia is growing more desperate, having already suffered more than a half a million casualties. Russia knows the DPRK threatens peace and security in the region. The Kremlin knows the DPRK's unlawful ballistic missile and nuclear weapons programs undermine the nonproliferation regime that has helped to keep the world safe from nuclear war for decades. Russia knows the DPRK is a pariah with one of the world's worst human rights records. Russia would not turn to the DPRK for a military alliance unless it were desperate and had run out of options. The international community must act to protect Ukraine from Russia and North Korea. A North Korean-backed Russian victory in Ukraine, even a partial one, would dangerously destabilize the world. Появление в этом ряду утверждения о переброске на украинский фронт, фронт военнослужащих КНДР никого не должно удивить. Все эти случаи объединяет одно – голословное утверждение отсутствия каких-либо маломальских убедительных доказательств и стремление отвлечь внимание от действительно существенных проблем, представляющих собой угрозу международному миру и безопасности. В этом мы лишний раз убеждаемся сегодня, выслушивая стенания Соединенных Штатов и их сателлитов. Видим в разыгранном сегодня перед нами спектакле единственную задачу – попытаться задним числом оправдать собственное решение отправить войска НАТО для поддержания режима просроченного киевского диктатора на плаву. КНДР – наш добрый сосед и близкий партнер, с которым мы развиваем отношения во многих областях. Наше взаимодействие носит транспарентный характер. В его рамках проводятся визиты, заключаются международные договоры, подписываются коммерческие контракты в различных областях двустороннего взаимодействия. Это наше суверенное право. Хотел бы подчеркнуть, что российское взаимодействие с КНДР и в военной и в других сферах соответствует международному праву и не нарушает его. Оно не направлено против третьих стран, не представляет никакой угрозы для государств региона или международного сообщества. Мы намерены развивать это сотрудничество и впредь, и никто не может нам это запретить. This cooperation between Russia and the DPRK is a direct violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions. Russia voted for these resolutions. Now, it violates them. This undermines not only international peace and security, but also the Security Council itself.